My name is Anna Karanek Laser. I was born in 1887 in the ghetto in Warsaw. You see, my family and I, we were Jewish. And in Warsaw, that is fair to Jews lived in the ghetto. In those days, the Ruskis and the Deutsch, they fought over Warsaw. And that made life very difficult for us. We worked very hard in the ghetto, but the money we earned, it went to the taxes for the Tsar and the Kaiser. We lived in fear of the long knives of the Cossacks who came often to the ghetto and brought with them much pain and much blood. I was still a young woman when I met and married my husband, Jakob Laser. He was an apprentice to the cobbler in the ghetto, and he was known for the fine work he did with leather. All of the Russian officers, they wanted him to make their boots. And I thought, Jakob, he was the bravest man in Warsaw because when he talked to the officers, he stood up straight and tall, and he looked them in the eye. And that was something not many Jews dared to do in the ghetto. After Jakob and I had our first two children, Morris and Yetta, he began to talk about leaving Warsaw and going to America. We knew that a war was coming and that it would be a bitter war that pulled in all the nations in Europe. We knew that Warsaw would be a battlefield for that war. We had saved some money, but not enough for all four of us to go to America. And so we decided what we must do. Jakob must go alone to America. He must work hard and he must save his money until he could send for us to join him. And the children and I, we must wait. We must stay in the ghetto. And so in 1913, Jakob, he left. He left for America, taking a boat for the cows to Galveston in Texas. The laws for immigration to America, they say that Jakob must have in his pocket $10 so that he could pay his own way until he finds a job. And Jakob, he had his $10. But on the boat, he spends 25 cents for a haircut. And so he is worried that he will not be able to go into America because he has only $9.75. But when the boat arrives in Galveston and Jacob approaches the gate, he shows the men there the money that he has, and they laugh and they wink and they wave him through. And Jakob thinks, these Americans, they are good. I am good here. Jakob works several months in Galveston and then he travels north and comes to Victoria. In Victoria, he finds a job as a shoemaker in a shop on East Constitution Avenue. The shop, it is owned by two grumpy old men who do not like each other and do not like making shoes. So Jakob is able to buy the, sh the shop in just a few years. And in a few more years, Jakob is able to buy equipment for making and repairing shoes. It is electric equipment the first electric equipment in Victoria. And Jakob renames his shop 
Santa Victoria Electric Shoe Store. And meanwhile, the children and I, we are waiting in the ghetto. A few months after Jakob leaves for America, I give birth to our third child, a little girl named Leah. Jakob knows how to read and write in Hebrew, but I never learned. My papa, he says that school is for the boys and husbands and babies are for the girls. And so the letters that Jakob writes to us, my brother reads aloud to the whole family. It hurts my heart that I cannot read them for myself. It hurts my heart that my husband cannot send me private words because he knows I cannot read them. But his letters, they are reassurance that he is well and that our dream of a new life in America, that it is coming closer. And so the children and I debate through the war, through the hunger and the poverty, until at last a letter arrives. A letter that says, come to me, come to America, my family. Jakob has worked hard in America. He has built his business and he has built his reputation. He has made friends and he is a part of this community. He bought the first Liberty Bond that was sold in Victoria. And as Victoria comes to know him and know the story of our family, you people, you are so generous. You give him money to help pay for our travel. And so in 1920, seven years after Jakob left us, we come to America. But it was not the reunion we had hoped for. As the children and I approach Houston, where we know Jakob is waiting for us, our train is rerouted to Bloomington. In Bloomington, they call Jakob in Houston to let him know what has happened. In the meantime, the children and I, we take a train from Bloomington to Victoria. So when Jakob arrives, we are not there. So Jakob, he gets on a train to Placido. In Placido, he decides that he will walk the last miles to Victoria. And at last we find each other at our home on Craig Street. In 1919, Jakob, he leased a brand new house on Craig Street and he spent a year getting it ready for us to come. In every room, there is the furniture that we need. In the kitchen, there is a box with ice with all the food we could want. So much food. There is a new bicycle for Morris and a dollhouse for the girls. And in the driveway, a brand new Studebaker car. And so we begin our life in America. In just a year, Jakob becomes a citizen of this United States. And soon we have two more children, Dave and Rose. The children and I, we learn to speak English and I learn to cook American food. I learn to make pickles from the cucumbers and I become famous for my pickles. I make them for the neighbors. I make them for a restaurant downtown. You know that restaurant. It is still there. It is Fasadi's restaurant. 
and they serve my pickles with every meal. Life is so good. I don't know if I can make you understand what it was like for us to leave the ghetto, to leave the one room where we lived, to leave the war, the hunger, the poverty, the hatred for Jews, and to come here to Victoria, to a home of our own, to safety, to the joy of being together without being afraid. That is the blessing that is America. And so, in time, our five children, they give us 13 grandchildren, and life is so good. We go to temple on Friday nights. On Saturdays, we take the children to the moving picture shows downtown. And we watch the Andy Hardy movies with that handsome young man, the Mickey, Mackie, Mackie Roney. On Saturdays, we go to Riverside Park. We have picnics with fried chicken and pickles. Our grandchildren, they go to university. And not just the boys, our girls, they go too. We have a life that we never dreamed of having. Our children have a future. We never dreamed of being able to give them. And life is good. In 1955, I died at Bidar Hospital. It was my heart. Six years later, Jakob dies too, and we are together. Sometimes, late at night, we still like to visit the places that we love in Victoria. His shop, the park, our temple, our house on Craig Street. Do you know our house? It is owned now by the foxes. They are such nice people. But she don't cook so good. So sometimes I leave her a jar of my pickles. <laughs> 